I don't know how to turn it on. Can microphone, do we? Is it on now? <laughs> it's on? Okay, hi. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Patricia Lawler with the North Carolina Community Foundation. So before we start the countdown, I have a few housekeeping items. Please make sure that you have filled out your participant affiliation survey. Even if you leave early, please fill out, fill out your evaluation form. You may pass the survey or evaluation to our volunteers as you leave. Bathrooms are out this door to my right and your left. Um, ladies is on the far side of the exit door. The men's is the second door. At the end of this session, please stay seated for a few moments for some direction for the next session. Hello, welcome to this session of the Jacksonville Onslow Board Development and Training Conference. I'm Patricia Lawler, the Southeast Regional Associate for the North Carolina Community Foundation. I wanna thank you all so much for being here today, and I'm proud to be the person to introduce our next speaker, who is the Director of the Quality Enhancement for Nonprofit Organizations, or Kino program at UNCW. Natasha uh, Davis is one of the first people I met when I moved to Wilmington about seven years ago. And uh, ever since I've been involved in the nonprofit community, and I am very pleased and privileged to be serving as a member of the Kino Advisory Board in Wilmington. Natasha comes to us with um, more than 15 years experience in nonprofits, and most re her most recent accomplishment among many is the, uh, becoming the new director of Kino, which is a long time coming and we're all very, very excited about it. Um, I have had um, uh, the program that you're gonna hear on nonprofit board governance is excellent. Every nonprofit should participate and board members should be there too. I've done this program and I try and get as many of my board members to attend as possible. So with no further ado, I'm not gonna sit here and roast you, Natasha, come on up. <laughs> and start. Thanks. Thank you, Patricia. And Patricia is, ever since she got to Wilmington, has really jumped into the nonprofit community, not just in Wilmington, but throughout the whole region that she serves. And you guys are so fortunate to have her and to also have Craig and his United Way team, the city of Jacksonville and Coastal Carolina Community College. There's no other city that I work in, no other community that I work in that has the support that you guys have in this community. So I wanna give a round of applause to all of them for what they do. Okay, so nonprofit board governance. We talk about this every conference. So I try to put some spins on it, make it a little different. Some of the things we went over just a few minutes ago in the financial management training. So for those of you that were in there, you need to answer the questions and speak up so you can show that you learned something. And they don't know that we were doing touchdown dances in there in the finance room. So what is the purpose of a nonprofit organ uh, board? Governance. Governance. Yes. The board is the legal guardian of the organization and is responsible for the organization's current and future welfare. So we asked this question in the previous session, who owns a nonprofit? Good job. How many of you think the community owns a nonprofit? Raise hands. Okay, for those that aren't raising your hands, how many think the founder owns the nonprofit? How, do you, how many of you think the board owns the nonprofit? What about United Way? Do they own all the nonprofits? 
no, the community. So that's why your role as a board member and as a staff member of a nonprofit is so crucial and so important because you're not doing that for yourselves, you're doing that for your community. And the money and the resources that are in that organization, that's your community's resources. And it's your job to make sure that you're a steward of those resources and that you're making sure that they're used to your community's benefit, to the best benefit that you can do. So governance. What's your name again? I can't, okay, it's a Blair. So Houston said governance is why you're on a nonprofit board. Governance is to govern, to steer, to control, and to influence or persuade from a position of authority. And so we're going to talk about the three ways that you do that as a nonprofit board. So individual board members have legal responsibilities. How many of you have directors and officers liability insurance with your boards? Okay. How many of you think that if your organization gets sued, you're completely safe because you've got that insurance? No? I bet you there's some of you out there and you're scared to raise your hand. Because that's what I thought when I was on my first board. Because I didn't know. And I didn't do what? From the class before, what did I not do that was the most important thing as a board member? Very good. Let's see, they listened a little bit to me. So, even though you have that insurance, the business judgment rule says that nonprofit board members who exercise good faith judgment are generally protected, not guaranteed, from liability to the organization and its members if you are acting in those three ways. Duty of care, duty of loyalty, and duty of obedience. How many of you have heard those three things before? How many of you have heard them from me before? Yeah. <laughs> so what is the duty of care? What does that mean? Pay attention. Good job. What is duty of loyalty? What is that referring to? Organization comes first. What? Organization comes first. Right. And what is the duty of obedience? Obey the, law. Obey the laws and what else? Bylaws. Bylaws and what else? IRS. IRS. <laughs> that's their own. That's their own set of laws. That's a whole other ball game, right? So what we're going to do today, normally at these conferences, I am trying to talk like the micro car man from, how many of you remember that micro car man from like 15 years ago, had the commercials and he talked so fast? Holy Christmas. Okay, well anyways, I remember, and I normally am talking that fast. So we're going to slow it down this session, and I want to have a lot of question and answer and feedback. So duty of, a care, of care, paying attention. What are some of the things that you can do as a board member to practice duty of, a, of care? Attend the meetings. What else? Ask questions. Ask questions. What else? Read the minutes. Read the minutes. What else? Participate in their discussions. Participate in discussions. And I'm, I'm repeating this back so that they can record it because I don't know if they can hear you or not. So, um, review the profit and loss statements. Review the financial statements. Mm -hmm. Right. Did we learn that earlier just a few minutes ago? And why is it important to review all the finances? You won't be there next year if you don't. <laughs> you may not be there next year if you don't. Some, some of us have learned that the hard way. All right, so good. Attending board meetings, reading your board meeting materials. How many of you get your, first of all, how many in this room are board members? So I can get an idea. Okay, how many of you are staff? This is so exciting to see so many board members. It's usually the opposite in Wilmington, isn't it, Patricia? Um, so how many of you get the board meeting materials before the board meeting? Wow, that's awesome. Okay, they told me not to run, so I'm not going to do the high five thing that I normally do. Because, well, too, I'm afraid I'll trip, but um, that's awesome. So for those of you that don't get the board meeting materials beforehand, when you walk into a room, is it easy or difficult to ask good questions? When you walk in the room and they're right there on the table, and you start having discussion five minutes later. Is that easy to, to form good questions and think about it? No. <coughs> Why not? Because you, you need to think about something before you jump into it. Right. You need to think about it before you jump into it. You may need to research it. You may need to see, is this following what the IRS says? Is this following our bylaws? You can't do that at the spur of the moment. So for those of you who get board meeting materials before your board meeting, 
how many of you used to get them the same day and have switched to that? Is there anybody in here that has been on boards that did it both ways? If you are volunteered, I got a question for you. Uh, we have, have done that to some extent, but it's because there were people who didn't have computers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you had the meeting where you got the materials beforehand versus the meeting where you got them when you arrived in the room, what was the difference in those two meetings? It slows the meeting down terribly if people haven't, haven't seen the minutes or whatever. It makes a longer meeting. makes a longer meeting. How many of us like longer meetings? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, we don't want that. And we, we want to go, we want to make change in the community. We want to feel like as board members that we're benefiting our community. We want to have those discussions that are benefiting our community, that are thinking outside the box to create solutions to problems in our community, to make things better. We can't do that if we're inundated with asking questions about every little detail, you know, and did we buy tires at the right vendor or not because we didn't look at the finances before or those kind of things. You want to make sure that your meetings are designed in a way where you're engaged and you're asking those questions. Understanding your report. So you get the reports. How many of you can truly say you understand your financial reports? Right. Much smaller re result. And that's fine. Not everybody is a CPA. I'm not a CPA. I have an accounting degree but I don't want to sit for a two-day test. So I am not a CPA. I don't know everything when I look at financial reports. I have to look it up, and I've been looking at them for fi over 15 years. So that's okay. But as a board member, how are you going to start to understand those reports? What are some of the things you can do to make sure you have understanding of not just your finance reports, but maybe your program reports or your granting reports? What are some things you can do? Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. What else? Go to training. CPA present. Sit down with the financial officer. What was someone said over here? Have your CPA come in and make a presentation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Provide, provide periodic updates on whatever, whatever program that are affected. Right. Right. And you can use some of the tools that we talked about in the last session, some of the financial management tools. We talked about dashboards and using dashboards in a way that puts your financial position or any other thing that you're monitoring or tracking, puts it in pictures so that anybody can understand that. So in the, that session, I put up a dashboard and you couldn't read the words on purpose. You couldn't read the words. You, all you could see was the chart. And I could ask the room and they could tell me, we need to ask questions about that chart. They had no idea that that chart was asset growth because they couldn't read that. It was so small, even I couldn't read it. I forgot what it was. But they knew we need to ask questions about that because it's going, that line's going down. And unless that's expenses, that just can't be good, right? So you use these charts in a way so everybody is on the same page and everybody understands. And then asking questions. It's the most important thing ever. If you don't ask the question, then you're still responsible for knowing the answer. So you always need to ask the question. So duty of loyalty. Avoiding the conflict of interest and putting the organization's best interest first. What are some, have any of you been in situations in your board meeting or when acting as a board member where you had to exercise a duty of loyalty? And would any of you share that experience? Do you mean where you have a conflict of interest? It, that could be, okay. yes. I've had a situation where I was on the United Way board, but I also sat on boards that they funded. Uh -huh. So in certain instances, I would have to recuse myself. <laughs> it's just if you're on multiple boards, um, there may be a time where there's a conflict of interest, like when I sat on the United Board and we were funding one of the agencies that I also was on a board for. Mm -hmm. And you just have to be very careful. So you have to recuse yourself so that you don't look like there's a conflict of interest. Right, because what could happen if you didn't Hold on, what could happen if you didn't recuse yourself? Well, they'd think that I was favoring maybe that organization since I also sat on it as well. Right. I was giving preference to it other, uh, over other boards. Right, so then, so then what does that do to United Way's reputation? It doesn't help it, does it? Because you know, they only fund the things that their board members participate in, right? 
So, yes, you tell your example. We were, we were faced a while back with a, the, the situation where uh, we were asked to be a participant in, in a project where there was a fairly obvious conflict of interest within the, within the project itself. Mm -hmm. And we had to come to the conclusion that we just couldn't, we couldn't be a partner to it because it was, it was, it was too, much, too much conflict of interest and it wasn't going to it wasn't going to be resolved. Fortunately, it resolved it, it, itself in quite another way. But um, but we had to we had to walk away from the program mm -hmm. just on ethical grounds because it was an obvious conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. Good. Does anybody else want to share the, their experience? Yes, Greg. <laughs> he has his own personal microphone. <laughs> Pull it out of my pocket. Um, well, in addition to kind of the personal um, choice of recusing yourself, um, I know for our board, given the sensitivity to funding decisions, um, I make it a prerogative to make it very transparent. So when there are decisions where we're either um, reviewing different vendors or um, different providers or the grants that we provide, it's very um, obvious to all the board members there any potential or perceived relationships with these vendors, contractors, or agencies so that other board members are aware of it. And if someone that might have a conflict of interest is commenting on it, whether deceptively or not, usually it's not, you know, they just are providing their feedback. Um, other board members can check that um, and they can um, kind of peer govern as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So that transparency, why is that transparency important? Because whose money are you stewarding? Someone else. Right. So if, if I had your money and I was investing it, would you want to see what I was doing with it? Right. So that's why nonprofits have to be transparent. Because it's the community's money. And a lot of times we forget that because we're in the role. And I'm, I'm guilty of that too. We're in the role where, you know, we're figuring out where to do this money. We're around the table. We got a team. We're doing all of this. And you're like, this is our money. We're, we're managing this. But no, it's not our money. It's the community's money. So the grants that I get for Keno and the university gets, I even have to remind the university this sometimes they might not like it, and say, this isn't your money, this is the community's money. This is for our community. And we've got to do what's best for our community. And that's, you've got to remind yourself that. And sometimes we get lost in the chaos of everything that's going on and forget that. So what if, what if and this is an example, and some of you may have heard this before, when I was on a board that was an international organization, we had to choose between two different countries to expand. And I had just spent a month, over a month in Southeast Asia and Cambodia. And I so desperately, the whole reason I joined that board was hoping to get some help over to this country that I absolutely fell in love with while I was there. So we had to choose between Cambodia and Uganda. Never been to Uganda. I'm sure there was lots of people, and if I'd been there, I'd have fallen in love with that country as well. But my passion was Cambodia. So we're in this several board meetings. It took months to decide. And we have to compare the two countries. Where should we go? We can't afford to go to both. Where are we going to go? So if I had voted for Cambodia simply because that was my passion, would I have been practicing a duty of loyalty? I may have. If simply because my passion, no. If I had voted for Cambodia because we had connections and, and funding and, and a foundation to be successful there, would I have been practicing a duty of loyalty? Unfair. So why do you say yes? Well, if I'm understanding it, if you didn't vote for Cambodia in spite of the other place being the better choice, then you would not have had a conflict. Correct. Why did you say no? Because you're, you were giving both of them the same uh, fair shake. If you, if you knew, understood both countries, it would be easier to make a decision, hopefully, than, than to just go one-sided. If it's one-sided, you, you, you put a wall between you and the other country. So what could I have done to make sure I was balancing both? To investigate both. Right. Which is what we did. And I ended up voting for Uganda because that was the smarter choice. Broke my heart, I cried when I left that boardroom, I'm not going to lie to you, but I knew that was the better choice. So that's, that's the thing you've got to put, not only worry about those financial conflict of interest, and, but worry about your own internal conflict of interest. Am I making this vote because I really think 
let's say with Carol, they, remember right? Let's say Carol and Ursula say, you know, we don't want to do football anymore. We're going to do baseball. Because. It goes back to the community. Right. You have to know the whole community. Right. So they can't just start deciding to do baseball without saying, hey, is this football thing going to work? <laughs> Are there other sports that are going to work better? Those things, just because they now have a passion. There's, let's say their son or, or grandson's now playing baseball, so we're going to switch up. That's not what's best for the community, exactly to your point. And duty of obedience. So following your articles of incorporation and your bylaws. How many of you know what your bylaws say? All right, about half. How many of you will know what your bylaws say after today? <laughs> Good. How many of you know how many board members are supposed to be in your organization? All right. And your bylaws say how many me meetings you have a year. What's a quorum for your board? Do you have committees that you have to have every year? All of these kind of things. And those are some things that when you're, especially when you're joining your first board, but if you never go to training and don't know, it's, what is it that, um, Oprah and Maya Angelou say, if you, when you know better, you do better. That's what they always say. I love Oprah and Maya. And so when you know better, you do better. So now you may go back and say, well, wait a minute. Does it tell me how many meetings I have to have? When I joined my first board, I had no idea that there was this set of rules that told me I have to meet four times a year or that I have to have X number of people. So you want to go back and ask those questions and look and say, are we following our own rules? Forget about the IRS and, and the and the government, are we following our own rules that we set for ourselves? You know, if you're not following your rules, why should anyone else follow your rules and, and follow you as leaders? So local, state, and federal laws, that's, that's obvious. Maintaining your IRS compliance. Now, what are things that you can do as a board member to make sure you're doing these things? What's the number one thing you can do? Right, louder. Ask questions. Okay. What else can you do? Local, state, and federal laws. Do you know every local, state, and federal law that applies to nonprofits? Research. You can research. research. Right. What else? Right. Get advice from a qualified source. You search out those answers so that you know you're doing right. Because in the eyes of the law, just because you didn't know it was illegal, they don't really care. I mean, I got pulled over a couple months ago. I didn't know I was speeding because I saw the 35 sign, and so I assumed 40 was acceptable. But apparently, <laughs> apparently there was a 25 sign that I didn't see, so that was really not good. So a couple months in driving school later, I'm here. But that officer didn't care that I didn't see the 25 sign. He could care less, and I still had to sit through six hours of driving school. So you know, not knowing is not an excuse. So board, as board members, that can't be your excuse. Your excuse can't be, well, I didn't know what that director was doing. Because what is someone going to say to you when you say that? If I say, I, I didn't know. What? It goes to the law is no excuse. Right. Right. So if I say that to you, what question are you going to ask me? Why didn't I know? Why didn't I know? Why didn't I know? Right. So you, you've got to take that ownership of yourself because, again, you're stewarding your community's resources, right? All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit about what questions should I ask before joining a board. Now, most of you in here are already on boards, but some of these we'll go through. Some of these you may not have thought to ask before joining a board. How many of you in here joined a board because your friend asked you to? Okay, it's okay. That's, that's why a lot of people do it. One, okay. How many of you joined a board because you're super passionate about the organization, what the organization does, but you don't really know how the organization does it? Okay, we all do that. My first board, I didn't even, I thought I knew what the organization did. I went to my first two meetings and was like, what have I done? This is not at all what I thought I was getting into. And then I found out after they asked me to be treasurer, I did a Google search and then found out that they had had some financial mispropriety before I was treasurer. I'm like, what in the world have I done? So 
I got off that board really quick, but that was lesson learned. But that was my first board. I never knew, so I didn't know better. But once I did, you can bet I did better. But I didn't do that. I didn't make that mistake more than once. So you want to ask these questions before joining. And if you're on a board now and you haven't asked these questions, you may want to ask these questions to see, is this, a, is this an organization I want to continue to be involved with? So how many of you can tell me the mission of your organization? Oh, that's not good. All right, what is it? What's yours? To promote economic development and quality of life through sport in Jacksonville and Onslow County, North Carolina. Oh, you're just a show off. <laughs> <laughs> Who else can tell me theirs? What's yours? Good job. What's yours, Craig? And my focus is on the building blocks for a better community, um, health, education, and income. Um, <laughs> Come on, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so even your king leader over here, I can't do keynotes either, so don't, not, it, not verbatim, but you know, those are things you, but do you know the gist of your mission? You know why you exist, right? So as board members, why is that mission important? Drive your actions. It guides your decisions, what? It's a guideline to your decisions, right. So if you are faced with the opportunity to get a $100,000 grant, but it doesn't fall in that mission, what are you going to do? Change their mind. Huh? Change the mission? No! You're not going to change their mission. You are, you are so fired if that was your answer in all seriousness. Change the donor's mind that you could do that. I have done that. Um, with one organization that I was involved with, we were um, given the opportunity for a lot more than $100,000. But we would have had to do something that was not what we're good at. It wasn't our mission. It wasn't it. Wasn't it. And that was a difficult decision because it was a huge chunk of money. It was not a small amount of money. But it didn't, at the end of the day, it didn't follow that mission. It could have made our life a lot easier in some ways, but it didn't, build our, didn't fulfill our promise to the community. Because what is your mission statement? It's your promise to your community, right? So you think of it that way instead of just, oh, it's a statement on the paper. This is our promise that we've made to our community. And then that helps you kind of take, wait a minute, this is important. I've got to do this because I gave my community my word that this is what we're going to do. What is expected of board members? How many of you knew what was expected of you before you came to your first board meeting? Oh, wow. One, two. Two brownie points right there. So is that something that would have been helpful for you to know before signing on? What if you signed on and you found out you have meetings every two weeks and they're about three hours long each meeting and then you have committee meetings on top of that and oh by the way you need to give us $10,000 each at a minimum? Are you going to pass out? Because I would. <laughs> you need to know that up front, right? So how many of you have had somebody say, join this board, oh we just meet once a quarter, you don't have to do anything, you just just sit there so we have a quorum. We've got this all together. The director knows what she's doing. You just, you just come and so we have a quorum. Have you ever had that conversation? I've had that conversation. I've had someone approach me with, that way. So you don't want to do that because you want to be transparent. You want to know what you're getting into. And you also want to ask for these things. The latest audit report. Now when you ask for that audit report, do you just want the financial statements? What else do you want? Huh? Some explanations. There's a letter that the auditor gives that's not required to be publicized. What is that letter? Does anybody know? The, the management letter. And what that letter does is it tells you if there are, there are internal controls. Now I think it's called an internal control letter because they've, isn't that right, Patricia? Haven't they changed it? But um, so you want to ask for the internal control letter. What that does is it gives you your organization advice on how to better your internal controls. 
Why is that important as a future board member? What might be in that letter? Danger signs. Huh? Shortcomings. Danger signs. Shortcomings. Strengths and weaknesses. And this will be what your contributor is going to ask you for. That is going to be what your contributor is going to ask you for. Right. So you don't want to go bragging to your friends about being on this board and then them say, oh, well, I saw that management letter. Yeah. You know, that's not, that can be embarrassing. But if there's something on there that needs to be improved, is that, does that mean don't join that board? No. That just means you need to be aware of that. So when you're looking at your meeting packets and you're looking at your finances, you just want to be aware and you want to ask those questions. If they recommended improving this process, before you join that board, you want to say, well, did you improve this process? What changes have you made? So not just yes and no, but how have you improved it? You know, one of the things that may be in there that, is, um, that often happens with, re with organizations that get reimbursable grants. Do you know what reimbursable grants are? Everybody? That's where you have to spend the money to get the money. So what sometimes happens is you've got a, a short cash flow. So you spend the money, you write the checks so that you can get the money in to cover mailing the checks out. So you hold them in a drawer. And that seems all simple and fun and games when it's one check at first. But a lot of times what happens is if you don't make that money up, then you get it snowballs into a really big deal. Now why that's a big deal is that that funding agency can come and take the entire grant and ask for it back. You've already spent that money because you can't even pay what you promised to do with the programming. So you're in a, a world of hurt. So, you know, that audit letter may have some clues that that's going on. So I've seen audit letters where it said, you know, these checks were post-dated or pre-dated. You need, you know, improve this process. That can be some red flags. So that's important for that. The last year of board meeting minutes. What can you find out from those minutes? Dissent on the board. Huh? Dissent on the board. I can't understand. Dissent on the board. Dissent on the board, yes. So do you want to spend your hour to two hours a month with a bunch of people that argue all night? Is that, I mean, is that how you want to spend your time? That's not how I want to spend my time. So that can let you know. That, uh, what else can you know from the board meeting minutes? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, yes. So what are some positive things, too, that you can know? What they accomplished in these meetings. What they've accomplished. How their meetings are run, what they focus on, what's important to them. So we all know there's different ways. Everybody has their own way of doing minutes. But what is reflected in your minutes can be a very good indicator of what's important to that board. Because if it's important enough to write it in the minutes, then it's important to them. So you, that also kind of lets you know are their priorities in line with what my priorities would be for that organization. The board of director listing. Why do you want that? To see who's on the board. Right. Who are you going to be spending time with every meeting? So that's important. Right? I mean, who wants to spend time with Carmela and Glenn on a board every day, right? <laughs> I don't think they're in here to smack me. He'll come back later. And then your current year budget to actual. What's that going to tell you? Right. And where are we? Are we in a shortfall? Are we ahead of the game? And if, if you have that and you're in a shortfall and you're looking at the board meetings and there's nothing in those minute, meeting minutes, there's nothing in there about the shortfall, what's that telling you? <laughs> they, they clearly don't value that shortfall <laughs> like, like I might value that shortfall, right? So that can, that can tell you a story. So th if you just ask for those four things, Five things, no, four things, I can't count. Um, if you just ask for those, that can give you a good picture of this organization that you're getting ready to join, right? And so as current board members, if you're trying to recruit new board members, how can you use this information to help you recruit better board members and be more successful at your recruitment? If everything there is, is, is in good standing, then it's something worth going into. Right. And if you, if you give them that, what does that tell you? Let's, let's say, because I can remember your name, that's why I'm picking on you. So Carol comes to me and she wants me to join her board. And she tells me the good things her organization's doing. She tells me about the meetings and all of that stuff. But I don't get that. 
I, it may be that you just didn't know because you know better, you do better, right? But what if Carol comes to me and she says, I really want you to be on the board. These are the good things we're doing. This is how we measure it. And I want you to have a good understanding of our situation. So here are our last year's board minutes. This is our financial statement, our management letter, all of this right there without me even asking for it. What does that tell me? That yes, that she's truthful, that I can trust her, that she's open and transparent. So even, even if everything on, that, on those things aren't stellar, even if there's things that we need to work on, she's not hiding it from me. So that tells me that's someone that I can be on a team with and we can work together to improve those things. But if she's hiding that from me, that tells me I'm not sure if we can be a team. That doesn't tell me we can't, but unless she refuses to give it to me, then that's a red flag. But I don't know, I don't have that certainty, like if she just handed all of that over. So when you're recruiting board members, have that information for them so you can say we're an open book. We're not perfect, but we really want you on our team so that we can get better. And you shouldn't be afraid to ask. Right, because what's the most important thing? All right. How much more time do I have? Do you know? Okay. All right, so we, yes? You're approached by an organization who doesn't know about these things. So, for example, like new organizations who, who are starting up, they may not even know what half these things are because they haven't been maybe through an audit yet mm -hmm. or um, they haven't been a year yet. So they're, let's say they're at their six, eight month mark. Um, or they started at grassroots and then they just became a 501c3. Mm -hmm. How would you approach um, that if you were either starting or you were coming from that, that, that like grassroots into actually being a 501c3 and building your board? Mm -hmm. Or you were approached by an organization who doesn't really have like these things how would you then measure their, their, um, their transparency? Okay, so the question, so everyone else could hear, is what do you do if you're approached by an organization that doesn't know they should be given, giving new board members all of these things? How do you judge their transparency? So how would someone in the room answer that? Would you say, well, if you don't know this, I don't need to be on your board? No. no. Well, sir? I think I would gauge it based on how they responded to your question. If right. they appear defensive, if they appear to be uh, like they were hiding something, or if they refuse to give it to you, that would certainly send up some Right, red right. <coughs> what, so how they respond to that question is a big thing, if they are defensive or if they're very open and forthcoming. Another good thing is if they don't know this, another good question to ask is what are you doing as an organization to make sure that you are aware of these best practices? So are you going to trainings? Are you doing webinars? Are you participating in Keno? Because who wouldn't? And, you know, but other things, are you looking online? Are you a member of the NC Center for Nonprofits? Do you call Patricia for advice? Do you call Craig or Glenn or Carmela? What are, so you can ask them, what are the things you're doing to better yourself? I know you're, you're just starting out. Can I use you as an example? You sure? Um, so with Tri-County Crusaders, did I get it right? They know that they're a new organization. They know that they've got to have a track record and they need to build their capacity. So what makes me trust Carol and Ursula is that they reached out to Keno and said, we know we're new, we know there are things we don't know, we know we need to improve, and we're reaching out to you to see how you can help us and what resources are out there to help us improve. That tells me that they want to be better, and that's somebody I can be on a team with, right? So those are questions that you can ask. What other questions do you have? Anyone? All right, so what's the most important thing to do as board members? Ask questions. What are the three duties? Duty of? Duty of? Duty of care, duty of loyalty, duty of obedience. So are, all, are you doing all three of those things after tonight? Yes. What? <laughs> well, I'm not joining any of your boards. Are you doing all those three things tonight? Yes. All right. Well, thank you for spending time with me and for being here to better your organization.